Hi everyone, welcome to Fat to Thin Seniors r and I'm Raven, I'm 76 years old and I'm going to have um, <laughs> gastric bypass surgery, uh, R&Y, ruin y I Medicaid approved the surgery. Last week I spoke with the nutritionist and received her guidelines for the pre-op liquid diet. That's a little strange about that. In this vlog, I'll be talking about healing with weight loss surgery and the steps I'm t taking to heal the rest of my life, too. I'll also be talking about cross addictions. That's other things we're addicted to other than food. If you're curious, please join me on this journey. Continue to watch and please comment. <laughs> Hi everyone, this time I'm going to be talking about healing. I pray a lot. I pray for other people as well as myself. I pray for other people mostly. And I say things like, thank you for their healing. Well, I was praying, saying thank you for their healing, trying to remember each person individually and what they look like and seeing, trying to see them he healed. Um, and then I started listing my blessings, you know, going through people who have helped me, situations that have come up that turned out to be a blessing, and things like that. And then somewhere along the line, I realized that I had never, ever, ever said, thank you for my healing, my own healing. So I did, and it was like, a, a light or something came into my body really fast and just lit up everything. And I felt like I had just taken a breath after years of not breathing or not breathing well. And I felt clean and clear and wow. I said, you know, I should have done that sooner. And it still kind of sort of carries over. But I don't know if I should be talking about this kind of a thing, spiritual healings as well as mental and physical healings on this channel. But it seems to me that even though I'm going for weight loss surgery and, and I expect that it will heal my body, that I need to heal my mind and everything else too at the same time. Now, a lot of YouTubers talk about, those who have had weight loss surgery, talk about healing the mind, and you've got to get your mind together, otherwise you're going to fail at this, and on and on and on. I can see the validness of that. So, I, I along with the prayers, started looking at motivational speakers and have had some quite a few insights. One of them was this reporter who was talking about sugary stuff and how he had gone for 30 days on a diet of, of staying under 2,000 calories, which is recommended for a young man, and eating candy like crazy. But he stayed below 2,000 calories. And he gained eight pounds in one month. And I said to myself, wow, <laughs> that's what you've been doing. That's what you've been doing. I've been staying below 1,500 calories. I've been marking it down. I've been keeping track, the whole deal. But there were days, and a lot of them, where I ate candy. I kept it under 1,500 calories, but it was candy. It wasn't food. I don't really have a craving for any particular kind of food. Um, I just fill up on candy. And I kept gaining weight, even though I never went over 1,500 calories, or very, very, very seldom. Talk about an insight, opening your eyes, right? Well, the other funny thing about that is, is that I had this overwhelming urge a couple of days ago to get out and just screw it all and go get some candy. So I get in the car and I drive over to the supermarket, and I get over there and I buy some 
deli chicken and I buy some some uh, grapes um, and I had told myself that I was going over there just to get some aluminum foil which I really didn't need right that minute you know but it was an excuse to get me into the store so anyway I get out of the store and I get in the car and I realize I never got any Cheez-Its and I never got any candy <laughs> I just left the store I did not go back in but hey <laughs> but that goes to show you how your mind drives things and that was a big insight there was a another thing what about you know healing your money now I figure if I'm gonna do this weight loss surgery I might as well try and fix everything at the same time because they're all interrelated you can't do one without the other at least to, the, to my thought I can't do one without the other so you know I've been looking for budgeting software I keep recommending different things in the um, in the descriptions below and the latest one I've come up with which I actually think works is called Kakebo is K-A-K-E-B as in boy O well it keeps a it's like your grandmother used to use with the envelopes you know you put your rent money in one envelope and your food money in the other envelope and when the money is gone out of that envelope that's the end of it you know well this budget software works by the month for the same reason doing the same thing <laughs> and I found it was just really strange I had been telling my daughter that in about two and a half years I need to come up with a different income I need an additional five hundred dollars a month um, to cover what's going to be lost during this two and a half years that's coming up it's not a lot I mean we're talking five hundred a month you know but I need to replace it otherwise I'm going to be up the creek at any rate um, so here I am, I'm working through this Kakaibo, putting in everything for the month, and I realize that in two and a half years, all of my bills will be paid off, and I'll have an extra $500 a month. Just like that. Now, why I didn't say, let's have this happen tomorrow, is <laughs> another thing. You know, you get what you ask for. And in this case, this is not bad because I get the 500 I, I need. But meanwhile, so looking at that budgeting software and going through that and, and, and recording every little bit of pennies that I spend, uh, which is pretty easy actually using their software because it's, you can put it on your phone and on your computer and they cross-reference each other without you doing anything. I decided, okay, I needed to start building up an emergency fund because moving in here, I've depleted everything, okay? So I take, you know, 300 bucks and I go over to the bank and I'm going to put it into a say, start a savings account. Well, I realized when I got there, I mean, I put the 300 in, but if I drop below $300, then they charge me $4 a month. Now, the only thing is, is that they only give you 0.02% interest per year, which comes out to $7.50 or approximately. So you get $7.50, but they take back four a month. Okay, I said, no, that's not going to work. But I did the, the thing anyway. And then I set up automatic deposits because my belief is that you should pay yourself first I mean you got to pay your rent you got to buy your food you got to pay your bills and all that kind of stuff but you pay yourself first okay so I was putting some in the um, I set it up automatically to take that money out first thing in the month and put it in my savings account and then I realized that my one credit card charges 19% interest and if I paid an additional $26 a month then I could reduce that payment from 17 years to two and a half years so I changed the deposit on my savings I got some going into saving some to this bill so that I can pay it off in two and a half years which is where some of that 500 comes from amazing 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 at any rate I realized too that I sabotage myself well don't we all 
But I mean, on a lot of stuff, even on my wish and want list, I was saying before that I wanted a Mercedes Maybach, right? 2020 Mercedes Maybach. I found out it starts at $199,000. Obviously, I don't have that kind of money, but what the heck, it's on my wish and want list, right? So I had been talking to my Lyft driver, going to my nutritionist doctor's appointment, one of them. And I told him about this, and I was laughing and saying, yeah, it's a beautiful car and all of that. But, you know, if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't buy that kind of car. Anyway, guess why I don't have a Mercedes Maybach right now? Because I never asked for it. And then when I, every time I ask for it, I say, oh, no, 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 I don't need that. I don't want that. I probably say that about a lot of stuff. And so I'm kind of trying to keep my mind focused on see what did, what am I turning away you know so I decided to put on my vision board uh, a cop a picture of the Mercedes Maybach the two hundred thousand dollar car and I said well what I really wanted the car was so that I could tow my eight my six by twelve trailer that I'm thinking of converting it into a kind of sort of tiny house so that I can go travel cross country see my grandkids my great grandkids and then just come on back you know ain't no big thing but then I said, well, wait a minute, I got this $200,000 car. I can't pull a 6x12 cargo trailer. I have to have an Airstream. You know what I mean? You, if you're going to go sleek, if you're going to go right, you got to do it right. You know? So I decided that I was going to check out Airstreams. So I found the two, 2020 Airstream Caravel 19CB. The, it's 19 feet. Well, I only need it for a couple of weeks. I'm not going to live in it forever, you know. But it's a little under 100000 So I need 300000 so I can go, well, I mean, i got to have gas. <laughs> but you know what I mean? If you're going to dream, you know, you got to dream big. <laughs> and then there's relationship healing. You got to get rid of the naysayers. You got to get rid of the people who are forever dumping. I mean, you know. It's, it doesn't do anything for you. You know how you feel after listening to a half an hour. You know how you feel when they call and say, I'm coming over. <laughs> you know, get rid of them. Get them out of your life. You know, that's the way it is. So anyhow, I was talking about vision settings and vision boards. And you really should put a vision board. I mean, because... How are you going to receive what you want if you don't know what you want? Okay, I'm back. My phone decided to fall off the tripod. At any rate, okay, I use sparkpeople.com. I've used it for since 2008. Was that 11 years? Uh, you can, the thing about Spark People, it's free. It's 100% free, it really is. And they don't hassle you, you know, to constantly upgrade and that kind of good stuff. Uh, the thing is, is that you can not only set your macros, but you can set things like salt intake, anything. 70 some odd different things you can track for your food if you're into tracking and that kind of stuff. But they also have the ability to set goals. You can set goals and you can track them too and you can write those goals in your own words. You don't have to choose from a list of different goals and things like that. So it's good in all parts of life as far as setting goals. You should also get an activity tracker. Uh, I found that <laughs> when I first got my first tracker, I don't know how many years ago, uh, I thought that I knew I was sedentary, but I thought that I was getting up and moving around and doing things, you know. So I was I was getting some exercise. It turned out to be about 250 steps per day. I obviously needed to upgrade my activity, which I did. Um, so you should get the Kakaibo. You should also get a journal. Check out Spark People. They really are good. Kakaibo is, uh, right now it's free until the beginning of the year. I don't know what kind of special sale offer after that. But after that, it's like $17, $18 a year. Um, I think that in this month, and I've only been using it since the beginning of the month, the first of the month, that 
I, it's already opened my eyes to a, a lot of stuff. You should also journal. Get yourself a journal. Get something nice, you know, something you like, you know, something that's pretty. I have a journal. This one keeps the, I use it to keep the page, although it has, it has two of these things so that you could keep the page. But to, for me, this is easier. And I write in it almost every day. I probably should write in it every day. Sometimes I write stuff about what I got to do tomorrow. Sometimes I write how I'm feeling, you know, whatever. It's my journal. Nobody else is going to read it. And after I'm gone, if anybody reads it, who cares? <laughs> you know, uh, so get yourself a nice journal. Now, I'm still looking for, and your suggestions would be appreciated, for a good calendar to do reminder thingy. I've got separate items. I mean, I use the Google stuff that I've suggested below. The Google Calendar, Google To Do, the Reminder. But it just doesn't quite get it for me. Uh, the Reminder doesn't isn't loud enough. It doesn't jump up over other things. Uh, it's all three of them don't quite show up together. So you might put something in reminder and forget to put it and you have to put it separately on the to-do or the calendar, you know, something that works all together would be greatly appreciated if you happen to know of something. And if it's free, that works even better. Okay. So anyway, um, talking about the journal, <laughs> I went to the store this week. I, I find one of the things about the journal is I found that I'm cross addicted, particularly to shopping. I used to, um, well, I still do. I used to, every month I would order cat food, dog food, whatever would be on the list and that would go out the, the beginning of every month and then I got all these packages, you know, so it was really cool. Um, but I had limited myself certain things I couldn't spend money on without putting it on a list. For instance, if it was over $50 and it wasn't something that I needed immediately, then I would put it on my wish and want list. And then I would look at it maybe a week later and see if I still wanted it. If I still wanted it, I'd buy it. If I didn't, hey, that was okay too. Because usually what happened was as I realized that I had something else already that did whatever it is that I was getting ready to buy to do, if you know what I mean. For instance, I went to this, I had, I realized that this, I had this shopping problem when I was sitting here a couple of days ago and I was just craving some candy. And lo and behold, I needed some aluminum foil. Although I didn't need aluminum foil right then, you know, it was a good excuse to go to the store. So I go to the store and, and I'm excited about going to the store. I get the aluminum foil because I had to remember to get that, you know. And I ended up buying some chicken from the deli and some grapes and a few other things. And I left the store and I got in the car and I realized I never got any candy. I completely forgot to get the candy. Well, I kind of thought that was a good thing, you know. Um, but I still had been craving candy and went out the next day and got some. But the point is, is that I didn't realize I had this shopping addiction. I had never set up a, a thing for shopping. For instance, it was okay to, you know, it's okay to buy groceries. But to and things like aluminum foil, but the munchy stuff I need to put a limit on, you know, five dollars, maybe something like that in order to not just, you know, fill up my basket. There's been many times I've gotten to the checkout and realized, oh, I got crackers, I got cookies, I got two different kinds of candy and some kind of jello, something on the side, you know, whatever. Just junk, all of it junk, you know. So I need to do that. And so that's one of the things that the budgeting software and the journaling has, has kept me on track, has opened my eyes. So anyway, let me get back to this ruin why, this gastric bypass. I talked to the nutritionist. I sent her an email about uh, the liquid diet before the surgery. They, no one had ever said 
you know, you should do this liquid diet. Well, when I wrote to her, she said, well, the doctor didn't say you had to do a liquid diet, so you don't have to do a liquid diet. I said, well, I'm interested, you know, let me see what it looks like. So she sent it to me. And then I had, I had seen the Dr. Vong video that said, you know, you really should do it even if they say not to do it, just so that you can get your mind, your body together with that. She said, yeah, you could do it. It would, it would be a help, you know, that kind of a thing. But you don't have to do it. And if you do do it, don't do it more than a week. So I'd like your opinions. Those of you who have had the surgery, did you, did you have to do a, a, a liquid diet before the surgery? Do you think I should do that or just follow my doctor's directions and show up for surgery and not eat anything after 10 o'clock the night before? I find that the body and the mind together, work together, are really miraculous. They, for some reason, want to stay stagnant. They want to stay with the status quo. They already, the body knows fat, the mind knows fat, and wants to keep you there. And I was talking about stagnation being a sin. I think that's really strange that the body wants to keep you at, at a large, keep you at whatever size you are, and wants to keep your mind settled. I don't know what that had to do with survival when we were cave people, but who knows. At any rate, I think that in order to go, when you're doing this journey and you have the opportunity to have the tool of, of the gastric bypass, and you're in the process of changing your life, you have to change all of it, not parts of it. Not pieces of it, but the whole damn thing, okay? So change your life, save your life, say and feel, make sure you feel it. Thank you for my healing, your healing. <laughs> so you have a great day, okay? Please subscribe, share, like, ring the notification bell, and blessed be. Take care of yourselves. Thank you.